Hi there everyone, when you think of the archive here at the Royal Society, you probably think it's something that doesn't change very much. These books have been here for decades or hundreds of years. Nothing new ever happens. But that's not true. New things are coming into the Society all the time, thanks to people like Keith Moore here, who's the head of the Royal Society archive. And today, we're going to show you three new objects, three new items that have been acquired in recent months and are going to be added to this famous collection. Yeah, you are no longer the youngest thing in the collection, Brady, I'm afraid. No, no I'm not. these are more recent. I'm not even close. <laughs> Where are we going to start, Keith? We're going to start with this one here? Well, I know you'd like to open a box, so let's open a box, shall we? Okay, here we go. What's in the box? It is... Lots of tissue paper. Tissue paper, of course. Oh, wow. It is a very small old book. I said these are new to the collection. I didn't say they were new. No, they, they've been around a little bit. OK, so what am I looking at here, Keith? Well, it's, it's a small book, as you can see, and it's something that you probably wouldn't expect to find in a scientific collection such as ours. This is a prayer book. A prayer book? Yeah, so this is a book of common prayer. So if you went to church, as lots of people did then, uh, you might well have one of these in your pocket or find one in the church. You've got your text there, you've got your psalms and things like that. But this one's quite a special one because, as you can see, on the title page there, there's a name. Hump Davy. Humphrey Davy. Humphrey Davy, yeah. Later president of the Royal Society, of course. So this is his little prayer book from when he was a schoolboy at Truro Grammar School. This is what he would have taken to church with him. Humphrey Davy uh, was a great chemist. He discovered many elements. He, as I said, was president of the Royal Society, so one of the most eminent scientists of his period. He's like He's a, a top guy. Top yeah. tier, top ten That's type. Right. Yeah. yeah. But this is nice because this is Davy before any of that. This is Davy when he's just beginning to, to learn. Uh, he uh, is orphaned. Uh, he is semi-adopted by a local mayor called John Tonkin. And you can probably see his signature has just been erased there. Now, Tonkin kind of sponsored Davy. He must have seen something in this young lad. He got him into the grammar school and he gave him his prayer book. So his name is erased there. And here is Humphrey Davy's name put in. And the first thing Davy does, of course, is scribble all over it, as school kids usually would do. So you can see a little bit of text there that he's popped in. His Humphrey Davy, Penzance, January 1793. Was he written a psalm there as yeah, well? Yeah, so this is uh, the eighth psalm paraphrased, it says. Yeah, yeah. Right. He's in his early teens here. He's just off to school. How have you got this? Where did this come from? This uh, came via a, a book dealer. So uh, just someone who dropped me an email. Uh, he, he, he had this and was uh, looking to sell it on behalf of, of the owner. Uh, uh, would we like it? Uh, and of course, as a record of uh, Humphrey Davies' early life, biography of a, a president, yes, we would like it. There's no great scientific texts in here, but it just as a piece of biography and a, and a memento of, of Davy, it's quite a nice thing. One of the things I know you liked about it is sort of the, the watermarks on it and things. That's right, yeah, so it's, it's heavily water stained throughout. And you can just imagine, you know, the young Davy having to go to church on a Sunday, probably half asleep, it's in the rain, he might have dropped it in a puddle. Uh, you know, it's, it's a sort of little detail that uh, people who like books like. Look at that one, James. That's a Proper. Proper water damage. Proper lived in book. All right then, what else have we got amongst the new arrivals here at the New Royal arrivals? Society? Well, this is again a rather nice one. You will remember a little while ago we did a video about a certain snuff box. You can go and watch that snuff box video. I'm sure James will link to it. But we also, just to remind you all, have it here. So this is a bit of 19th century bling. Yes. You can go and watch the full video, but how does this snuff box relate to? the new object we're about to see. So this was presented to the engineer Charles Black of Vignoles for a bit of his engineering work uh, from a grateful monarch. Uh, but we have, as a latest acquisition, one of his engineering reports. Not quite as shiny, but rather nicely bound. And you can see it's on the mouths and delta of the Danube by Charles Vignoles, 
FRS. Fellow of the Royal Society. Now Vignoles had a, a really interesting and very varied career. He worked a bit in America, in South America, across Europe. He had a military career before he became a, a civil engineer. He was aide-de-camp to uh, Sir Thomas Brisbane. After whom the city of Brisbane is Indeed, named in yeah. Australia. So here is one of Charles Vignoles' engineering reports from the European side of his operations. And we can see mouths of the Danube. Okay. One of the most famous rivers in all of Europe, of course. Mm -hmm. The delta of the Danube, which lies in about latitude 45 degrees north and longitude 29 degrees east of Greenwich, is defined politically by the etc, etc, etc. So why would you write an engineering report on the Danube? Well, it's a major European waterway. Uh, you probably want to know about it and w what you would have to do to keep it open. So they're interested in things like dredging, for example, to make sure that the Danube is uh, is working all right. Uh, Vignelles also uh, built bridges out there. He built bridges in the Ukraine. It's got the sides of the pages here. have got this lovely goldiness yeah, to they're, them. Yeah, they're, they're gilded. Yeah, yeah, they're gilded. So this is a report that's designed to impress someone. You know, it's fair copied, you've got to be able to read it, and it's nicely presented as, as engineers would do for clients in those days. So we can see here, he's included in the report, just a little section through the mouth of one of the channels in the Danube. So we see the river, here's the Danube, and then it's going out to the Black Sea. Mm -hmm which is rather pretty. Yeah. But the really big thing is the fantastic map he's enclosed. Oh, yes. That is a map. Oh, you, you like a map, Brady, you don't know you? I do. Yeah. You know I do. So this is a map of the Lower Danube and adjacent countries to accompany Mr. Vignol's report on the mouths of the River Danube in March 1857. And this is a really large scale map which takes in the Danube, but surrounding nations. So you've got Bulgaria around here, you've got Moldova, you've got Transylvania up in the top corner. There. And we can see the river yeah. coming along here, coming towards the Black Sea and then fanning out as a delta yeah. and all these mouths as it goes out to sea. That is nice, oh, Keith. That's pretty good, I think. Nice engineering and science being done. And again, I have to ask, how have you come by this after all these years? Uh, again, uh, this was uh, from a bookshop. Yeah. Um, so uh, Come on, tell us the truth. You were on holiday, weren't you? I was you? on holiday, yeah, I know. I've got this really bad antiquarian bookshop habit. I just can't pass a bookshop. Uh, and, and there it was. So I, This man is never really on holiday. No, He's always know. looking. Yep. So uh, we got a really good deal from a very, very kind bookseller who, who allowed us to have it for actually half price. Half once, price. He, once he found out where it was going. Really? So, yep. Uh, Did you tell him it was going to be in one of our videos? I didn't, no. So oh. it'd be a nice surprise for him. He'll probably double the price after that, I would think. Yeah. yeah. Now you'll like this one. This very small, very delicate manuscript, but as soon as I open it, you will recognise what's inside. All right, we've got a printed page here, Magical Square of 16. Straight away, Magical Square sets off bells in my head. Yep. And then we've got some... Are they handwritten? They're all handwritten. This is a manuscript. Yes, oh so goodness. they're hand copied all got of these. Beautifully, beautifully handwritten magic squares. So in another life, I make videos about mathematics and numbers, mm. and I've made several videos about these things called magic squares, which are these arrangements of numbers where all the vertical and horizontal rows add up to the same number. And the diagonals also Diagonals add up to, as well, yeah. yeah. And of course you can get them in different sizes, and this manuscript takes them from the very smallest ones to the very biggest ones, which is kind of nice. Look at these. This was a donation. We're very, very lucky in the Royal Society in that most of the acquisitions we have come from people who just give us things. And very often it's, it's fellows of the Royal Society who might give us their scientific papers at the end of their careers. But occasionally we just get walk-ins, people who either email us or, or come into the library. Uh, they have a, an FRS in their family tree somewhere. They retain some papers or just old manuscripts and, and they, they give them to us because they're just so happy that their ancestor is being uh, recognised, celebrated and, and the materials are being used. This came from the family of Taylor White. Now Taylor White, a very interesting 18th century fellow of the Royal Society, mainly known as a, a natural historian and a collector, so you don't necessarily associate him with uh, mathematics. But this is a nice little manuscript which we think is Taylor White's, which has possibly come from a later member of the family, but there's a family tradition that it's his, so it's uh, useful to have these 
these uh, notes from the family. I mean, look at these. And each square has a little uh, description underneath about it. Mm. That's right. And some of them are being copied from other sources because magic squares were one of those things that mathematicians and scientists like to trade. They publish them in books. And you can see on some of these, you will get the original source. Yeah. So this one, uh, you can see, is published in an arithmetical book from Nuremberg in 1544. So this is the little description of why it's special, where it's come from. They're beautifully written. Yeah, uh, but, but look at where this one came from. Oh, this is a magic square from Benjamin Franklin. It says, yeah. a magic square of squares. I have a very good friend who is very, very interested in magic squares of squares, and I'll be very sure to show this to him in the near future. The love that has gone into drawing these is yeah. evident. Yeah. I love it. You said sometimes you get what you call walk-ins, people who just come and arrive at reception mm. with something that could be special. Yeah. When your phone rings upstairs and someone says, Keith, we've got a walk-in and they've got a whole bunch of documents, are you like rushing downstairs full of excitement? Uh, I, I get very excited. There's nothing better than just someone coming in with a box of material and you don't know what's in the box and, and opening that up, unpacking it and just seeing the treasures in there. Yeah, I still get a kick out of that. New treasures all the time. Thank you for showing us these. Look, I don't know about new acquisitions, but one thing we're always really happy to have here at Objectivity are new Patreon supporters. It's you, the viewers, like the people whose name you see on screen at the moment, who really help keep things going here. If you'd like to see Objectivity continue to flourish and have more and more videos, please do consider giving us some support. If you're a Patreon supporter, you have access to extra videos, extra pictures, all sorts of goodies behind the scenes as well. If supporting us on Patreon's not for you, that's fine too. We're really happy just to have you watching. Please do subscribe and tell your friends about us.